Chapter 16 of Captivating Bible Stories for Young People. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. Captivating Bible Stories for Young People by Charlotte Mary Young. Sixteenth Sunday, The Death of Moses. First Reading. They angered him also at the waters of strife. Psalm 106, 32. After the forty years in the wilderness, the children of Israel were quite close to their home in the Promised Land. There was only the river Jordan between them and the hills and valleys there. But Moses was not to go with them. Once when the people were crying out for more water, and God told him to command the stream to come out of the rock, Moses was so hot with anger that he did not attend. He said, Here now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? And he struck the rock with his rod, instead of speaking to it. The water came out as it had done before, but Moses had been so hasty that he had not thought how to obey God exactly, and so he was not to be allowed to lead the people in as a great warrior, lest he should fail again. God was not angry with him, but had forgiven him. Only he had his punishment because he had done wrong. Joshua was to lead the people instead of Moses. So before Moses was taken away, he called Joshua and all the chief men of each tribe, and put them in mind of all that God had done for them, and warned them very solemnly that if they broke their promise and did not keep the commandments, God would punish them, first a little, and then more and more and would even cast them out of the good land at last. For, mind, God always keeps his promises, and as surely as he gives the good all that is best for them, so surely he will punish those who turn from him. Second Reading So Moses the servant of the Lord died. Deuteronomy 34, 5 It was not God's will that Moses should lead the Israelites into the promised land, but he was to die on the east side of the river Jordan and so he would have his rest above instead of in the land of promise. But first God told him he might see the land. So he went up into a very high hill, and there God made him able to see all the home of his people, the snowy hill of Hermon, and Mount Lebanon, where the cedar trees grow, and the hills and valleys where Abraham had wandered, and Isaac and Jacob had lived, and which he had hoped for all his life and green fields and cornfields and vineyards, on to the great blue sea stretching out to the westward. That was where his people were to live. But there was a better home for Moses. Nobody saw him any more after he went up into the mountain. There he died, and the Lord buried him, and no one knows of his grave. Only the children of Israel wept and mourned for him. Third Reading Be strong and of good courage. Joshua 1 6. After Moses had gone out of sight on the mountain, God himself told Joshua that Moses was dead and that he must lead the children of Israel into the good land God had promised them. Moses had laid his hands on Joshua's head, and God's Holy Spirit had come to help him to see what was right and to lead the people. He must be strong and brave and do all that God commanded and then he would be quite sure to be able to drive away all the strange people out of the land, and to make a home for the people in the land that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had loved so well. All the people promised they would do as Joshua bade them. So he was their captain instead of Moses. End of chapter 16「Chapter Seventeen of Captivating Bible Stories for Young People. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Olivia. Captivating Bible Stories for Young People by Charlotte Mary Young. Chapter Seventeen, Seventeenth Sunday. Israel in Battle. First Reading. Ye go over the Jordan, and dwell in the land which the Lord your God giveth you. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 10. After the children of Israel had been forty years living in the wilderness, 
God led them into the beautiful land he had promised them. But before they could come in, they had to get across a river, a deep river, with rocks on each side and a stony bottom to it, and the water running very fast indeed. The name of the river was Jordan. There was no bridges to go over, and no boat to row them across, and not only all the strong men, but all the women and little children had to get over it. But nobody need be afraid when God is helping him. God told them what to do. The priests, who were like clergymen to them, were to take the ark, that is, the chest where the two tables of the Ten Commandments were kept, and were to walk down to the river without being afraid. And they were brave men. They believed what God told them, and went down into the swift stream in no fear of being drowned. And behold, as soon as their feet touched the water, it stopped flowing and stood still. No more water came down, and all the hosts of the children of Israel went straight over the bottom of the river with dry feet. The priests stood up in the middle all the time the others were going over, and when everyone was safe on the other side, they came after them. And by and by, the river came rushing down again in its own place, for it was God who commanded it to stop short and make a dry place for his people to pass over. And so they came into the land of Canaan that he had promised them so long. Second reading. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down. The letter to the Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 30. After the Israelites had come into the land of Canaan, there was a strong walled city before them, and its name was Jericho. They could not go any further till they had taken the city. But God was going to show that he fought for them. So he told them not to fight, but that every day for a whole week the priests should take the Ark of the Covenant on their shoulders and walk around the outside of the walls of the town. Seven priests were to go in front, blowing on trumpets made of ram's horns, but nobody else was to make any noise. So they did one day, and nothing happened. Joshua bade them to do it the next day. Perhaps some of the Israelites wondered and were impatient, but they had to go on the next day still. And after that, the ark was carried round once every day for a whole week. On the seventh day, Joshua told the priests that God would have them go round not once, but seven times. And so they did. And then, at last, on the seventh day, Joshua said, Shout! The whole of the people shouted, and the priests blew their trumpets, and then, oh, great wonders! The walls of Jericho fell down flat, and the people went in and took the city. So the Lord fought for Israel. Third reading. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. This morning you heard how God gave the children of Israel victory over Jericho. After that he gave them more victories. None of the heathen people could stand before them. They took their towns and drove the heathen out and had the fields and gardens and houses for their own. Then Joshua was to divide the land among them and fix what cities each tribe should have for its own. All the chief men of each tribe came to him, and the Lord taught him how to fix the places for them to dwell in. The children of the good Joseph had the very best lot of all, as his father Jacob had wished. It was just in the middle of the country, and was full of beautiful corn land. Two tribes and a half lived on the other side of the river Jordan, on the edge of the desert, but where there was fine grass for their cattle. The tribe of Judah had a very hilly, rocky part of the country, but they loved it, because it was where Abraham had lived, and now lay buried. And up all the hills they planted vines, where fine large grapes grew, and in the valleys were plenty of cornfields. All over the country people had each man his own house, with his vine and his fig tree to shelter it, and olive trees in his garden, and a field to grow corn in, and hillsides near, where he might keep his cows, goats, and sheep. The rocks and the hollow trees were full of wild bees' nests, so that indeed they found it, as Moses had told them, a land of corn and wine, a land that flowed with milk and honey. And they were very glad to be there, and to rest after their long wandering in the wilderness. After they had a quiet rest, their first sorrow came. It was that their brave leader Joshua had grown old, and felt himself near death. So he called all the chief men together, and told them over again how much God had done for them, and that if they would serve him and keep his commandments, all would go well with them. As for me and my house, he said, we will serve the Lord. And all the people promised too. 
they said they would serve the Lord and would not go after other gods, but would keep his commandments. End of chapter 17. Recording by Olivia. Chapter 18 of Captivating Bible Stories for Young People. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Captivating Bible Stories for Young People by Charlotte Mary Young. 18th Sunday, The Judges of Israel. First reading. The journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honour. Judges chapter 4 verse 9. When the Israelites had come to live in the beautiful land that God had promised them, they ought to have loved and served him, and thanked him for all his goodness. But no, they liked worshipping false gods, and they made idols to pray to, cut out of wood and stone, and they learnt wicked ways. Then God was angry with them, and he punished them by sending cruel nations to conquer them, to burn their houses, to steal their children, and drive away their cattle. Then they would be sorry, and pray to God again and he had pity and sent some brave men to defend them. Today we hear how sadly they were used by a fierce man named Sisera, who had nine hundred war chariots of iron to go into battle with. His people used to shoot at the Israelites at the wells when they came to draw water, and nobody dared to go along the high roads, but only through the paths for fear of being killed. Second reading. The Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Judges chapter 4 verse 9. At last God spake to a good brave woman named Deborah, and told her to send for a man named Barak, who should lead the Israelites to fight with Sisera. She sent for Barak and told him what God had said, but Barak was afraid to go alone. He said he must have Deborah with him. He ought to have known that, if God sent him, he was sure to be safe and to succeed. Deborah told him that since he wished it, she would go with him, but that the journey should not be to his honour, for the Lord would sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And it turned out as Deborah said. Barak won a great battle and drove the enemies away, so that they did not hurt the children of Israel again for forty years. But he did not meet with Sisera in the battle, nor get the honour of killing him. Sisera fled out of the battle, and was killed after all by a woman, whose name was Jael. Barak lost all the honour, because he would not do just as he was told, but was afraid without Deborah, just as if God could not help him better than Deborah could. This morning's lesson told how Deborah and Barak conquered the cruel Sisera. This evening's lesson is the song that Deborah made to thank God for having given her the victory and saved his people. Third reading. They chose new gods, then was war in the gates. Judges chapter 5 verse 8. The Israelites never kept long from sinning and setting up idols, and by and by God let a set of robbers called Midianites, come in and burn their crops and houses, drive away their cattle, and steal their children for slaves. Then the Israelites were sorry, and prayed to God to save them. And God had pity on them, and sent his angel to a man named Gideon, to tell him that he was to fight for the Israelites. A great many men came to Gideon, but the Israelites were to be shown that it was as easy for God to save them with few men as with many. So he bade Gideon send home all but three hundred men, and Gideon believed and sent them home and kept only the three hundred. Then at night he took these men and gave them each a trumpet and an earthen pitcher with a lamp inside the picture, so that the light could not be seen. He took a hundred with him and sent the other two hundreds another way, creeping quietly along till they came to the place where the Midianites had set up their tents and were all lying asleep among the cattle they had stolen. There they lay, and never heard Gideon and his men coming till they were close to the camp the three parties on three sides. Then, all of a sudden, every one of the Israelites broke his pitcher and let his lamp shine and blew his trumpet and shouted, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon! The Midianites were awakened out of their sleep to see the lamps on three sides of them in the dark and hear the trumpets and the cries. They were very much frightened and quite wild with fear. They all began to beat down one another, for they did not know friends from enemies. A great many were killed and the rest fled away leaving all that they had stolen behind them. And so God delivered the Israelites from the Midianites by the hand of Gideon, and gave them peace again, as long as they would serve the Lord. End of chapter 18. Chapter 19 of Captivating Bible Stories for Young People. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Olivia. Captivating Bible Stories for Young People by Charlotte Mary Young. Chapter 19. Nineteenth Sunday. Samuel. The First Reading. 
Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 18. There was a very good woman named Hannah, and she grieved because she had no children. Whenever she came with her husband to God's holy place, she used to kneel and pray with all her heart to God that he would let her have a son, and she promised that if she had one, she would lend him to the Lord all the days of his life. At last God granted her prayer and gave her a little son, and she named him Samuel. She was very glad when he was born, and she thanked God and sang a hymn of praise for her dear little child. But she had promised to lend him to the Lord all his life, and she kept her promise. As soon as little Samuel was old enough to be without her, she took him to the holy place, that was instead of a church, and gave him to wait upon the Lord. He lived with a high priest whose name was Eli, and was taught by him. Eli was a very old man, and his sons used to behave very badly. But Samuel was always good and obedient to him, and used to wait upon him, and help him when he served God in the holy place. Samuel wore a little white linen dress like the priest's, and when his mother came to see him, she used to bring him a little coat. She had five more children afterwards, three sons and two daughters. If you listen in the afternoon, you will hear how God spoke to Samuel whilst he was still a little boy. And I'm sure you like to think of the little child in his white dress ministering before God in his beautiful, holy place. But only think, you can be like Samuel. Your father and mother lent you to God for all your life when they took you to the font and made you God's child. And though you live at home, you go to church and can serve God there. If you kneel and stand and sit quietly at the proper times, mind the prayers and repeat the amens and the verses you know in their right places. And if you are obedient and try to be good, God will love you as he loved Samuel. Second reading. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 9. Hannah brought her little son Samuel to be brought up in the holy place by the high priest Eli. Samuel was very good and holy, and God blessed him and loved him. One night, when everyone was gone to bed, but the lamp in the holy place was not yet gone out, Samuel heard a voice calling to him, Samuel! He sprang up at once, for he thought that Eli had called him, and he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for thou didst call me. But Eli answered, I called not my son, lie down again. And Samuel went back to his bed. Then again came the voice calling to him, Samuel! And again he thought it was Eli's call. He was not lazy or fretful at being roused out of his sleep, but he ran at once to Eli and said again, Here I am, for thou didst call me. But Eli sent him back to his bed again, and there again he heard the call, Samuel! Patiently he once more rose and came to the old man, but this time Eli knew that it must have been no other than God's own voice speaking to the child. So he bade Samuel go back, and next time he heard the voice to say, Speak, Lord for thy servant heareth. And so Samuel did. Again his name was called, and he made answer, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And God spoke to him in the still night, and told him to give Eli a fresh warning of the sad things that were coming on him and on his sons. Samuel was forced to tell Eli all in the morning, sad and mournful as it was. He was afraid and grieved to have such things to say, but he told the truth, and Eli was too good a man to be angry with him, and only said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. And after that, God often made his will known to Samuel, and blessed him, and all Israel knew that Samuel was God's own prophet. Think of the great honor and blessing of having God so often speaking to him. But we have that blessing, too. God is nearer to a little Christian child than he was to Samuel, for the Holy Spirit speaks in a Christian child's heart, and tells him to be good and dutiful, and to think of God, and to say his prayers with all his heart. And that is better than even being a prophet like Samuel. Only we must take great care to attend to that voice, or it will leave off, and then we shall get worse and worse, like those bad sons of poor old Eli. Third reading. The Ark of God is Taken. First Samuel chapter 4, verse 17. God helped the Israelites again and again, but they would not leave off their wickedness, and at last he punished them still more. There came up a nation to make war upon them, fiercer than any before, called the Philistines. Then the Israelites fancied that if they took the Ark of the Covenant out into the battle with them, they would get the victory, as they had done when Joshua conquered the land. But God had never bidden them to take the Ark. He had commanded that it should stay in its place at Shiloh. They did not heed this, but took it out into the camp 
and all the people shouted for joy when it was brought, with the two priests, Hophni and Phinehas, Eli's sons, to take care of it. When the Philistines heard the shout, they said that the gods of Israel were come, and that they must fight all the more bravely. And they did. God would not help his people because of their self-will, so he let them be beaten by the Philistines, and Hophni and Phinehas were killed, and the holy ark of God was taken by these heathens. And when poor old Eli the high priest heard the sad news, he was so much shocked that he fell down backwards and broke his neck and died. God still shewed his power, for when the Philistines put the ark into the temple of one of their false gods, the idol fell down and was broken, and wherever it was taken, the people fell sick, till at last they sent it back to the Israelites. But it never came back to Shiloh. It was hidden in a lonely house in the woods, and the Philistines were strong, and the Israelites were very weak and miserable because they had been so very disobedient. End of chapter 19. Recording by Olivia. Chapter 20 of Captivating Bible Stories for Young People. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Captivating Bible Stories for Young People by Charlotte Mary Young. 20th Sunday, King Saul. First reading. Behold, the Lord hath set a king over you. 1 Samuel chapter 12 verse 13. There was a young man named Saul, who was very tall and strong. His father kept a number of asses, for in the land of Israel, people rode on asses instead of horses. One day all the asses were lost, and Saul and one of the servants went out to look for them. They went a long, long way, and never found the asses, and at night they came to a city and there they found Samuel. Samuel was an old man now, and grey-headed, and he ruled over Israel, and everyone honoured and loved him, because he was so good and just. Saul was very much surprised when the great and good Samuel met him, and led him into the house, and put him in the chief place, and gave him a choice of meat that had been set apart for him. Saul could not think how Samuel knew anything about him, and he was still more surprised the next morning, for then Samuel came out of the city with him, and sent the servant on before. Then Samuel took some oil, and poured it on Saul's head, which was what was called anointing, and told him that God had chosen him to be king over all the people of Israel. Was this not wonderful news for him? And you see, God had led him to Samuel to be made king, though he so little guessed what was going to happen when he set out to look for the asses, and God still makes everything happen, even the least thing. It is all for our good even though we do not quite see why. So Saul was the first king of Israel, but he was only to be prosperous as long as he would take care to obey God. Second reading. There is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. 1 Samuel chapter 14 verse 6. Saul was the first king of Israel, but just at first, when he was appointed king, the people were in great distress for their enemies the Philistines had overrun the whole land, and held all the strong places, and were very hard to the Israelites. They would not even let a smith live among the Israelites, that they might not be able to have swords or spears made to use in fighting, and the Israelites had to go into the Philistines' country to get their axes and plowshares made, and to sharpen the goads or long sticks tipped with iron that they drove the oxen with. Nobody had a sword or spear but Saul and his good son Jonathan. All the rest of the people had nothing better to fight with than axes and mattocks and goads, and they were very much frightened and came trembling after their new king. But Jonathan trusted in God, and he and one young man set out creeping along a rugged steep path to see what the enemy were about, and by and by they came below the high rocky hill where the Philistines were encamped. One of the Philistines looked out and said, Behold, the Hebrews come forth out of the holes where they had hid themselves and he called out to Jonathan, Come up to us, and we will show you a thing. Now Jonathan knew, as he said to his friend, that the Lord can save as easily by few men as by many. So he was not afraid, and he and the other young man climbed up on their hands and knees till they came out among all the Philistine soldiers. Then they began to fight at once, and the Philistines were so surprised at these two men beginning to fight with them that they most likely thought all the others were behind, and they began to run away. The people in Saul's camp heard all the noise, and went out to look, and saw the Philistines running away. So they went after them, and killed many, and drove them out of the land, and got free of them once more. 
So God blessed and helped the good Jonathan, because he trusted in him, and Saul became a great king. Third reading. Entreat me not to leave thee. Ruth 1, verse 16. One fine summer day, a good man named Boaz went out into his cornfields where his reapers were cutting down the wheat. The Lord be with you, he said. The Lord bless thee, they answered. Then he saw a young woman gleaning, whom he had never seen before. He asked who she was. He heard that her name was Ruth and she was a stranger and a widow. Then why had she come there? Because she could not bear to leave her husband's mother, Naomi, alone in her old age. She knew that if she kept with Naomi, she must be poor and forlorn, and away from all her friends. But she loved her mother-in-law so much that she said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. Where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. When Boaz knew that Ruth was poor and a stranger, he told his reapers to drop some handfuls of corn in her way, and he told Ruth to keep among his young maidens, so that nobody might be rude to her, and that she might rest and eat among them when they rested in the heat of the day. Ruth carried home plenty of corn to her mother-in-law, and soon it was found out that Boaz was their nearest friend, and he married Ruth, and Naomi lived with them, and Ruth was no longer poor and a stranger, but was happy as a wife and mother in her beautiful home. End of chapter 20